I hope you, if, you, if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm a big smart ass. Oh, no, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I'm, I won't say but I do say but I'll behave. 1970 is when I first started taking pictures. That was 10 years old, and then I loved photography instantly. Next to photography is I love music. 1991, I was going up to Seattle to shoot a band called Queensryche, and I had an extra day off, so I asked the manager of Nirvana if Nirvana had time and would they be able to do a photo shoot. And he said, yep, they need photos, they have a new drummer. So it was the first shoot with Dave in the band. So I did the shoot, and then I got to know the guys really, really well, and that relationship started the, re the whole Seattle thing for me, because from Nirvana, I got to shoot Mud Honey, and from Mud Honey, I got to shoot Alice in Chains. It was such a small community, you couldn't go to a show without running into somebody from a band. After the club closed, that same group of people would go to somebody's house and then party all night long and we'd all be together, and it just became a real tight family. Before grunge took off, uh, I was shooting you know, lots of bands and lots of musicians and lots of hair bands in the 80s and things like that. And it was all about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And then grunge came along and it was like they didn't care about the sex and they cared about the rock and roll most. This is a funny story. I don't tell this part of it. But I was in, it, it, before I went to Seattle, I used to do stills on music videos a lot. That's how I learned how to direct, was working with David Fincher and James Cameron and Michael Bay and all these people. And I worked on this video the week before I left where the band got lost, separated and lost from the crew. And they spent hours during the day trying to find the band. And I'm just sitting there the whole, for hours just going like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. How do you lose the band? <laughs> so I had gone to Seattle and I was with Eddie Vedder and we were at a dinner and getting drunk and having a good time and getting ready to go to a surprise Soundgarden show at Rock Candy. I told him the story and I said, I can do better than that. I can direct, I can direct, I can direct. That's all night long, that's all I talked about was how I can do that. I can, I, and I won't lose the band. The next day when I kind of sobered up, I told Eddie, I said, I want to shoot, I want to do a direct music video. I think I can do it. And then I said, okay, so I want to do Pearl Jam and I want to do Jeremy. You know, the label bought it from me. Uh, the, it never saw, and technically never saw the light of day until YouTube was invented. But I tell people all the time, I got what I wanted out of it, which was simply to prove that I can direct a music video. So that was shot at the music video for the song Jesus Christ Pose, which was on Bad Motor Finger. But that song is written about one of my photos. It's written about a photo I took of Perry Farrell from Jane's Addiction. It's in bed in a Jesus Christ Pose. I'll go read the lyrics, look at the picture. So that's extra special to me. I, I don't know, I've never had any other musician write a song about anything or me. And then I'd say that one more that I really, really love is, is the Nirvana in the shower, because that's my shower. I used to, my old apartment at the time, I, I shot them in my apartment, in, in my alley behind my apartment, because I couldn't afford a location. When I shot them, I said, hey, come to my house. I just had this conversation at my opening night, I was talking to somebody. Back in the day, 10, 20, 30 years ago, whatever, when an album came out, there was the key, what we call the key art, the key photo that, that, you know, for George Michael, it was Faith, it was his guitar. Every artist had to have that cover. Nowadays, there's not, that doesn't exist. Now it's Instagram and a million photos a day, and it, it's just content. It comes out, it comes out, comes out, you wake up the next day, it comes out, comes out. There's no key art photo, the key photo that really says this is the project. It's a completely different world. And I understand when people tell me that, you know, I can do your job. I'm, yeah, you probably can. So, uh, but I always tell people, can you put up with all the assholes that I put up with for 50 years and can you put up with the idiots that I had to shoot? I was just smart enough to shoot the right people. In Los Angeles, when I first moved there, my boss told me the first day, it's not what you shoot, it's who you shoot. I could have the greatest pictures in the world of a bunch of nobodies or the worst pictures of a bunch of somebodies. They don't ask me, they don't even look at the photo. Who is that, who is that? They don't look at the lighting, the composition, the actual photos. They're looking at, who is that? Do I know that person? So it is what you shoot. I was just smart enough to get good people in front of the camera, and then I was smart enough to surround myself with really, really, really good, talented crew that made me look good. Like, yeah, I've shot strung out rock stars, guys who couldn't even stand, or you shoot people that are drunk, you shoot people, or I'm drunk. You know, like, <laughs> it's like this whole thing. It's just a process, and you know, I always tell people, um, the thing I'm most proud of at this point in my career is that I'm still here.